王子様がいると思う Probably. 思うわどうしてお姫様がいるんだから But who might that be? 王子様だってきっといるわ暗いここはなんと暗いのだろう石畳の路地を走る川口の乾いた音が響くそれ以外に何の音もない Hmm, it's a woman's voice. Does it mean the next villain we will encounter is a woman? I think it's so. I don't know. 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 ロンドンの暗がりを歩くこの私の息音は靴音に混ざるここには誰もいない私の焦がれるあの人さえもいないそうだ私はあの人のことを思い出していた私は誰かを探して歩いているのだった焦がれ求める美しいあの人、hmm. Who might that person be, I wonder? けれどここには誰もいない私は走っているたった一人のあの人だけを探しながら同時に迫り来るものから逃れようとして逃げろ逃げろ逃げろ逃げろどこからか迫るもの私から吸い上げようとする恐るべき暗がりこの暗がりに追いつかれたら終わりだ大地に染み込む色の一つへと私は返事で二度とあの人の声を聞くことはないのだいけない暗がりのあいつに追いつかれた生贄の少女の悲鳴が続く限りあいつは容易に私を引き裂くのだろう私や少女が恐れるものさながらの力で殺すことができるのだ何もかも何もかもああ私の中にたぎるものがあるそれはこの肉体に詰め込まれた命の色かもしくは私に迫りくる暗がりそのものかたぎっているのがわかる私は頭を振り内から湧き上がる熱と声をこれ以上聞かないようにと耳を閉ざしてほとりと何かが落ちる命の色がああ間に合わない私はあいつから逃げられないのだろう迫り来るものがもしも私のうちにあるのだとしたら It? What is it? A meta creature? けれどけれどもしもこの身が闇ならばさてあーメンチャウズンアゲン The man spoke, he was a man wearing a strange mask. Yeah, we know that already. Again, Miss Amaniwa, I s So, the way you are talking to you, talking to you, talking to you, talking to you. There was laughter in the man's voice, the one he spoke to was silent. Whatever you are, I'm not going to be nice of you. Oh, I'm going to be nice of you. It's not true. There was ridicule in the man's voice, the one he spoke to was silent. Not a Was he talking to anyone? So you could to more the show now. So then I could to more the show. So the what did I know? I stay on my knee and no mina summer. Go 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 so long on it. None no shake him or goes I must in. I to a gen seen at a knee and no joan and needs to keep us river. I don't know about that. There was no sound, there was no voice. The space was filled with silence and wordless prayers. 
It was in the past, the end of 1904, seven gathered together at a certain seance. One person made an announcement, with his quiet resolve, towards his six comrades. There was something in the darkness filling their surroundings. Was it writhing darkness, or was it red eyes? Well, surrounded by those countless somethings, the person spoke in a calm voice, calm but with a slight trembling, in an expressive voice, expressive but with strong feelings. So, the Count? それは願いの果てへと至る我が長年。しかし、私は思う。私は願うのです。この恐怖がもしも幻想であってくれればと。けれど私は知ってしまった。私の恐怖が孫を異なき事実であること。うちでこの身を災難む私の恐怖。それは
She <laughs> slightly. Even the daydream she just had clouded over like the events in the Black City. He who was speaking in a high voice on stage, the person playing the part of Romeo. Stage actor Henry Irving, the best actor in all of London. No, Britain. Perhaps even all of Europe. Henry Irving? Is that also a real person? She was fascinated by his lovely, charming form. Her eyes wouldn't leave him. Just like Angie next to her, she gazed at him while sighing. A verse from Shakespeare. Juliet. A verse she recognized, however, something sounded different about it. It was the result of the bold adaptation and modernization of the lines undertaken by Bram Stoker, novelist and manager of the Lusum Theatre there were in. Several words with a flavor different from that of the original Shakespeare were brought to life by an actor, echoing in her heart. Even Mary, who didn't know any love beyond the crush, could feel that love was something worth risking one's life for. She didn't really like reading a romance novels, but this felt completely different from them. She felt there was something fundamentally different between this and simply stringing together sweet words. Not that she was an expert on this sort of thing. Mary thought it was sublime for a human to feel this strongly about another, to compare her to a goddess without the slightest hesitation or concern for those around him. <laughs> she agreed with Angie's whisper, she was fascinated by him. To think there was a person in the same world as her who could speak so highly of love with such a dignified and beautiful voice. She couldn't believe it. たとえ燃え尽きようとも暗き闇に君が閉ざされようとも煌めく宝石よりも美しい君僕は君を愛しいつまでも守るだろう名前など何も惜しむことはない A story of a noble boy and girl, a story of sad fates, a story of troubled love. Two vivacious young lives, toyed with by a cruel fate and an unfulfilled love. A Shakespearean tragedy of beauty and transition. She knew the story, she'd read the play as a book several times. She remembered feeling moved by it and being impressed by the style and detailed descriptions. She knew the story, it should have been no surprise to her, and yet it echoed so strongly in her heart. It was night by the time the curtain fell. Mary and Angie left the theater. She could tell the theater was warm on the inside. The night air of London at half past eleven was very cold, her white breath mixed with a fog. It was an especially foggy night. The crowds in front of the theater appeared hazy. There were many girls around her age attending. A long time ago they would have been told that girls couldn't go out alone. They were still told that, but no other adults would just give up and accept it, so it was much better. It was especially acceptable in the West End, where the theatre was. They could even see a few policemen from here. Besides, so the time had changed. Mary remembered the cafe owner. Lady Claudia often talked about it. How others had come over from Kadath and helped people understand that women could go out alone. <laughs> A courageous girl without the slightest concern for the differences between aristocrats and commoners, who would talk back to men or aristocrats if they were wrong. Nonetheless, it didn't feel that way on days like today. Angie showed her smile just like all the other bright middle class girls around them. To her, うん、そうね。きっと私たちみたいに見とれるわ。私は笑顔を形作る。切な浮かび
Rachel. Partly because of the days they spent showing Viola around, Mary didn't avoid A&G anymore. She didn't want to think too much about why. She had got used to lying and to make a calm face. She had her sunken heart over and over, wishing for Angie to keep smiling at the very least. Last. Least. She felt herself getting used to that. It was the same tonight at the theater. She remembered the details. Angie had smiled and told her that she'd planned on going with Howard, but now had an extra ticket. She could tell Angie's eyes were studying her reaction, but she didn't touch on that at all, instead saying she'd love to. She was sure Angie was trying to cheer her up. She was sure Angie could feel a number of things she couldn't hide with false words and expressions, which was why. I see you are not satisfied with Howard, uh huh? そうなるとミスターハワードがとっても大変よ。そうだけど、そうだけど、でもね、本当のアーシェハワードとは別のお話ね。本当にそうなったらいいとこじゃなくてね。もしも自分がジュリエットだったらって憧れちゃうよ。
famous even by famous standards, in a completely different way from the detective. Why had a person like that spoken to them? As she wondered. Mary kept up her ladylike polit polite politeness, politeness just as she was taught, about half a second after hearing his name. Had the gentleman before her eyes seen through her brief disturbance and indecision? ありがとうございます。お二人とも。先ほどの会話を失礼ながらこちらに Mm, he still looks like he would like to suck their blood. ご丁寧にありがとうございます。素晴らしい舞台だったと感じていています。こんなことを申し上げて失礼に当たるのでは特許欲しくなのですけれど、本当に素敵な素敵な法案だと思います。Since when are compliments rude? ね、アシリカ。すごく、すごく素敵でした。ミスター。エリー様もとっても素晴らしかった。もったいない really was getting dizzy and staring too. Mary somehow managed to keep her footing and her ladylike expression. They hadn't imagined their words would be conveyed to the man himself, the actor who was practically in a different world to them. Mary couldn't help but wish Charlie had been there with them. She would have had something more appropriate to say, and she would have answered calmly without worrying about what to say. There was so much for her to improve on. If Angie hadn't been there, she would surely have been too amazed to talk properly, as she thought that. <laughs> Yeah, well, because he's the enemy. Probably. I wouldn't know. Since this is my first time reading this visual novel, in case you forgot, audience, this was the first time she'd met him, so Mary was strangely bothered by it. They had changed more words for a short while before he left to return to the theater. She followed his gaze the whole time. Holborn, 10th Street, or perhaps the 7th northern shore of the famous the show of the famous facing Holborn, an area recorded on public maps as part of Holborn, an area most of its residents called the Seventh Northern Shore. The area Mary's lodging house was in. The hour was quite late. Mary returned from the West End where the theatre was without seeing anyone's silhouette. Mary returned from the West End where the theatre was without seeing anyone's silhouette. Not one human shadow. But if she concentrated, she could see it. That one disturbing shadow man controlled by M. That thing assigned to watch her. They hadn't confirmed the contract recently, but that shadow man was there. It told Mary of the reality that none of it had ended yet. Even on the way home after enjoying a wonderful play, it wouldn't let her forget the fact that she was bait. That was what Mary thought. She had to be prepared at all times, so she could run through that black city at any time. She quietly told the shadow man, though she didn't know if it understood words. Mary rang the bell on her lodging house. She could have just opened the door and climbed up the stairs, but she wanted to say hello. She is once again watering the flowers. Yes, Mrs. Haddoson. 
私も何度かアービングさんの舞台は感激させていただいたけれど見て損はない素晴らしいものよねよかったわあなたが楽しんできてくれてたまには息抜きをしないとね関学院でのお勉強も大切でしょうけれどあなたはすぐに婚を詰めてしまうからアーシェリカちゃんにはお礼をしないとね今度連れてきなさいなお手製のケーキをご馳走するわ She'd called her to say she was going to see a play that night. Mrs. Hudson would worry if she stayed out late without telling her why. Mrs. Hudson welcomed her back with a smile. Mary could tell she was trying to be extra polite, her mannerisms and her words. Normally she never felt that from her at all, but lately she'd noticed it a lot. A hunch. Hi, I'm going to the next day. I'm going to the next day. I'm going to the next day. Okay. 今日はゆっくりお休みなさいねせっかく息抜きをしたのだから勉強したりしないできちんと疲れをとってそんなに疲れたりはいつもとそんなに変わらないですダメよダメダメいつもと違うことをすると気は晴れても体はちょっと疲れてしまうものなんだから今日はお休みなさいな<笑>はいわかりましたミセスハドセンどうしてだろう私今嘘なんてついてないのにことさらにそうしようと意識すると私の顔笑顔がなぜかこわばってしまいそうに Her face, her hair, her body She had a hot shower to wash away the day's lies and suit She changed into her pajamas after hesitating a little Mary went to her desk An expensive wooden study desk her mother bought for her to celebrate her acceptance into the Royal College. It felt cold to the touch. She took out a notebook from her book bag and opened it up as wide as she could. I was told that I was told that I was told that I was told that I was told. She remembered what Mrs. Hudson had told her. She decided to do it tomorrow after waking up instead of wrestling with it now. She just looked over the little engine science homework. Mathematics wasn't her field of study, but she had some lectures and homework on it. Mobile Fortress Theory, a mathematical theory for military purposes which originated in Kadath, a number of strange equations. Honestly, it was nonsense to her. She knew that the Royal College was working on mathematics with military applications, and yet she had no personal interest in it. Nor did most Royal College students. The majority opinion was that military mathematics, and the mobile fortress theory in particular, were overly pragmatic. It was supposed to be about efficient weapon usage, but it didn't feel like it. She didn't really know what a mobile fortress was to begin with. She'd heard about them before, but she doubted any student at the college had ever seen one. On top of that, the equation and numbers she could see, this theory of efficient application of calculation engines only made her impression of the actual weapons even more hazy. She thought the core of it was the same as the theory behind engine factory usage. Yes, Angie had told her that before. It still didn't feel real to her. Mary tilted her head as she remembered. <laughs> As she tilted her head, she left the notebook open for now. Her gaze drifted down to her desk drawer. She thought about that box. The secret box with all her writing notebooks, stories, words, sentences and pictures. A small box with things that didn't qualify as picture books. Tonight. <laughs> Mary flipped the switch on the engine desk lamp, the engine desk lamp, and got into bed. She sighed, telling herself that was the last one for today, and lay down on her bed, soft. The cold touch of a pillow, her body, her skin had been warmed up by that hot shower, and now that heat was spreading through her sheets. In her soft bed, Mary remembered before closing her eyes. そうねしばらく来てないミセス・ハドスンの言葉もあって時間を伴って思いそういえば近頃母様からの電報が届いていた
I hope she isn't dead. Betsuni, Betsuni, Mezrasi Kotonaka, Naimon, Kimpani Okutakurkotonaka, Metsuni, Timishinaka.